Hello everyone, I recently updated my laptop. I have bought a Dell XPS 15. Um, I had um, an Acer Aspire and I wanted something slightly more powerful, something that was more upgradable because with the Acer it wasn't upgradable. It was a great laptop and I had it for two years and it worked great with Cubase. But what I wanted to share with you is my experience of getting this laptop from new how I installed the software and then how I got on with using it with Cubase. It's really how Cubase works with the Dell XPS 15 because I searched um, Google and stuff for things and there, although there's a lot of information about the XP, XPS 15 there was nothing specifically with using Cubase so I thought why not as I've got it we'll have a look how it works and how it performs. So if I just give you a quick rundown of the laptop though so this is the um, the Dell XPS 15. It's quite, I've been very impressed with the build quality of it actually. Um, it's aluminium, so it's an aluminium shell. It's, it's quite weighty, probably a bit heavier than the Acer I had before, but probably down to, it's quite thick aluminium. Ports aren't too bad. We've got um, normal SD card reader, we've got USB on this side, and USB here. Um, we've also got the new Firewire and um, HDMI if you want to hook it to another monitor. Now the first downside I had with this with upgrading from the Acer is the Acer had three USB ports and this isn't necessarily Dell's fault it's with Steinberg having the dongle, the copy protection key. So I've got an old copy protection key here I have. So one of these, and of course, as soon as you use this, it takes up one of the ports. So if you want to run a sound card that's USB, which I do, which is an RME, fire, um, RME Babyface I use, I've got no more USB ports, which is a bit of a pain. So say you've got a sample or something you want to import for someone, someone gives you a file and you want to import it into Cubase, you have to think about that before you plug everything in, because you don't want to disconnect the sound card, and you certainly don't want to disconnect the dongle when Cubase is running. So that's the thing to consider. I'm hoping that at some point Steinberg will sort of modernize their technique like other companies do and will get rid of the dongle because copy protection keys are quite annoying. Very annoying. So what was I going to discuss? Uh, what I was going to do first of all was get the Razer. I don't know if you've seen online but the Razer have got their new 15 inch laptop out. Now the reason I went for the Dell was because I got it from the outlet. I got it from the Dell outlet, and it was, it was a good offer at the time. If you if you buy stuff from the outlet, it's things that have been returned, but come with a full year's guarantee. So you get a full year with that, but um, obviously cheaper than the retail price. So I got it from the outlet, and also if you check the outlet occasionally. So I did certainly. I found at weekends they often ran deals where you'd get 12%. Um, Sometimes they run a 15% deal, or if it's a special occasion they'll run a 15% deal. So I got this for a relatively good price. In fact, it was um, £1,200, well just under £1,200, Well, the retail I think is about 1800 on there. So it's still quite pricey, but if I was going to get the Razer, which looks great, the Razer 15, I have to say the new Razer laptop looks fantastic, but it would have cost me another £500, so I decided to go with the Dell, and I was hoping as well, the only thing at the back of my mind with it was, is if anything goes wrong, it's obviously a bigger company, I could return it, but the main issue was the £500. So, okay, what I've worked out so far, so I've loaded Cubase, I've loaded contact on here, I've loaded native, I've loaded the, all of the native instruments, I've got complete ultimate 11 or something like that. I've got all my synths on here, it's a 512 hard drive so it's relatively big. The great thing about this is upgradable, so it's got 16 gig of RAM and a, for a 512 SSD um, hard drive. It will go to a terabyte and um, 32 gig of RAM, so at the moment it's got 16 gig of RAM and 512, which I think will do me for the time being, but if I do want to upgrade, it's one of the only laptops, this and the Razer are the only ones I can find at the moment that will go to 32 gig of RAM, which sounds like a lot, but in audio and music production, it, once you get those instruments going, it really eats up the RAM, so it's definitely worth, um, if you're gonna use it for production, go for the m most RAM you possibly can. Okay, 
issues I've had with it over the, which I liked with the Acer, were I do a lot of gu guitar recording, so I'm using my RME Babyface, which has extremely low latency drivers. But I've just noticed when running on the battery, I'm getting the odd click and pop. Now it doesn't record on there, but audibly I can hear it. But when I look back on my audio lane, the clicks aren't there, which is great, you know. But obviously, if you're going to use it live, that's thing to consider. What I think it is, and I think I've got to the bottom of it. I'll get back to you on that. But I've I've stopped things running in the background services. So like OneDrive, there's a few things that were running in the background all the time, and I've disconnected those. So I think it's a case of what Dell puts on there. I know they call it bloatware, people, but and people have said do a complete fresh install when you get it but I wanted to do it exactly as it comes from the shop so everyone else can see how I've got on so if it comes to doing a fresh install obviously I'll do that and see if it fixes the problem but I think I'm sort of part way there by just looking what was running in the background and adjusting the performance okay so that was the most annoying part the only other slight issue I have it's got a backlit screen which is great because I work a lot at night the only problem is there's a Around the back here, there's a heat, there's a vent here, where it takes and there's a vent at the back, and I think this must be an outlet, so it draws it in from the bottom, keeps the process cool, because of course the processors run very hot. And just around the back here, there's um, a vent, so a radiator here, just pushing stuff out. So what I've noticed is at night when you're using the keypad and you've got it backlit, it shines a slight bit of light across here just and it's not it's, it's not terrible but you just notice it across the back here which can be slightly annoying when you you're looking I wonder what it was for a bit I wonder whether it was a lot actually an LED indicator on the back of the screen but that's it's not a massive gripe I'm not worried about it but of course you can't cover it to disguise that light there because it's actually part of the design so he, to, to reduce the heat of the laptop but things I like about it um, screens great it's got a 4k screen it's great the bezels are tiny I'll show you this when it's when after I've used it for a bit when I do my next report on that the hardly any bezels at all which is great it's really quick it boots extremely quickly because it's an SSD um, RAM's great so because it loads instruments very quick so I'm using contact player and things like that instruments so it, you can boot into Cubase really quickly it loads up instruments really quickly and I expect you're going to be able to run a lot of tracks and effects at the same time. My, my last laptop ran quite a lot and that was an i7, so it was a 2 core, dual core i7 with 12 gig of RAM. This is a 4 core and with 16 gig of RAM so this should run a lot more track count but to be honest I was running loads anyway but this hopefully the track count will be Great, but what I have noticed, the, the massive improvement so far has been loading speeds. You can get into Cubase so quickly from the laptop not being on, it boots ultra fast, you get into Cubase and you can get working really quickly, which when you're producing music and you're trying to do stuff, all of these things do add up. So speed of loading contact instruments, you know, if it takes ages, my lap, last laptop did take a while to load them. So I was hoping it would be similar to a desktop replacement. I'm not sure it's ever going to be quite the desktop replacement that I was hoping for because my desktop obviously has got 32 gig RAM and it's, it's perhaps easier to work with a, um, a desktop. But we'll see how we get on. And the other thing I do want to do at some stage, obviously I'm going to give you a report on how I get on with specifically Cubase but other VSC instruments and see if I have any issues. Any problems, I'm going to iron out problems because I wasn't expecting it to be completely smooth running because it's not designed purely for audio recording. So if I hit any sort of bumps in the road, I'm going to let you know how I sort of resolve those. But then within the next couple of months, what I might do as well is um, upgrade it to 32 gig of RAM and maybe go for the terabyte SSD so I can get all of my samples on here rather than worrying about using SSD, um, SD cards or having external storage. It would be great just to take this anywhere I go and not have to worry about plugging things in. And hopefully, if Steinberg get rid of this dongle issue, it'll be even better. But I'll let you know how I get on.